Carson Long, the offensive unit for the Panthers and lined up to receive the kickoff. It is Willie Taylor, number 29, Larry Sims, number 23. Willie Taylor is the man that Pittsburgh likes to get the ball to, and it's Alan Levitt to kick off for the Georgia Bulldogs. Georgia in red and Pittsburgh in white, and here we go. It's a kick that carries deep into the end zone, and Sims will not return it. It'll be Pittsburgh first down at the 20-yard line. The defense in for the Georgia Bulldogs. Eric Rowe called them junkyard dogs, and they're famous for it now. Lawrence Kraft, Ronnie Swopes. They're big, they're quick. Jeff Sanders, Adel, Georgia. Dickie Clark, the other defense man from Rossville. The linebackers are Jeff Lewis, Jimmy Griffith, and Ben Zambezi. The linebackers particularly not big, but they are very quick. Elliot Walker, number 34, is in the backfield with Tony Dorsett. As they split the backs, the first offensive play of the game, and it goes obviously to Tony Dorsett. He goes for about two, maybe three yards before Ronnie Swopes and Jeff Sanders make the tackle for Georgia. Second down and seven coming up. The defensive secondary for Georgia cornerbacks. Bobby Thompson. Bill Crow over the football field. Mark Mitchell, the little man, he's only about 5'8 or so, weighs about 170 pounds. Johnny Henderson, another cornerback. At six footer, 185 pounds. Back at the 21 yard line. On a driving tackle by number 61, Jeff Lewis, linebacker from the outside with Lawrence Kraft, the defensive left end. Temper, tempo, enthusiasm, fervor, call it what you want. Go there, there's plenty of it here. <laughs> Great start. The football is sitting at the 22 yard line. It'll be third down for Pittsburgh at the 22 as Bob Hutton comes in replacing Tony Dorset. It's an obvious passing situation. They put two fullbacks in the backfield now to give Matt Cavanaugh perhaps more greater protection. Out of the veer, both teams are veer teams, and Cavanaugh runs the draw. It goes to Bob Hutton, and Hutton comes to the 27-yard line. Georgia yelling fumble. We have no call yet from the officials. The referee is Vince Buckley, and it'll be Pittsburgh's ball. Vince Buckley is the referee. Matt Gorgeous, the umpire. Bob Jones, the headlinesman, Ben Lipman, the line judge, Larry Coleman, the field judge, Randall Clay, the back judge. Now it is punting time for Pittsburgh. The series record between the two teams reflected there, Larry Slider, averaging just about 45 yards per putt. Gets it, it comes back to Mark Mitchell, and Mitchell spurns from one. It'll be Georgia's ball, first down at the 31-yard line, 42-yard putt, Glenn Meyer. Made the tackle. The Georgia offensive unit up front. Steve Davis is the split in. Steve Collier, George Collins, Joe Tarasinski, Joel Paris, Mike Wilson, and Ulysses Norris. In the backfield, it's number 10, Ray Goff. Kevin McLee, a Pennsylvania lad. At running back, Al Pollard and Gene Washington will be the flanker. Ray Goff, number 10. Out of the veer come the Bulldogs. The Southeastern Conference champions going down the line. It is Goff keeping it coming out field. And Ray gets three yards to the 34-yard line before Don Parrish brings him down. The defensive unit for the Pittsburgh Panthers. They line up this way, and it's a very good one. Ed Bulanowski, Don Parrish, Al Romano, Randy Holloway, and Cecil Johnson. The linebacker Al Weatherington and Jimbo Kramer left to right, and the defensive secondary is also a very good one, led by Bob Jury, who had nine interceptions this past season. It is second down and seven. Both teams getting three yards on the first offensive play of the game. Golf keeping. They tries to turn it. They've got him right at the line of scrimmage. No game. As number 59, Weatherington is there, along with Cecil Johnson and Randy Holloway. Keith, you know, we're seeing a mirrored offensive system between the two teams, both of them using the veer, and you wonder whether or not they both know so much about their attacks, whether it will become a defensive football game. It'll be interesting to see. All right, here's Ray Goff now, number 10, settling in on third down and seven. Goff goes, wants the throw, penalty flag is down. He throws the pass to Scott. There is a penalty flag, however, back at the line of scrimmage. The pass complete up to about the 44-yard line of Georgia. To Steve Davis, number 80, coming across from split in. And the penalty will go against the Bulldogs. Have a look at Steve Davis, a young man out of Maryland. Davis. Curling into a lot of traffic, then stepped out of it. 
and the ball was drilled right in between two Pittsburgh defenders. But it didn't count. They back him up five yards to the 29-yard line for illegal procedure, and it is now third down and 12. Off straight back. The blocking. Short of his first down. He is brought down by Arnie Wetherington, number 59, who chased him all the way and finally ran him down up at the 37-yard line. There's Vince Dooley wearing the cap. The reason he's wearing the cap is his, all of his hair is gone because he met his promise to the junkyard dogs that if they won the Southeastern Conference Championship, he'd cut his hair and he did. <laughs> Here's the punt by Dukes. Beautiful kick. <laughs> Good one. Beauty. Fielded and down goes the pit return man, Willie Taylor, inside the 20-yard line. A 47-yard punt. No score in the first quarter. You're looking at one of the best-known insurance signs, the fire had a fireman's fund. But for the best deal, you should also know the sign of the man who sells our insurance. It's Oval, with an I, for your independent insurance agent. Independent, because he represents not just Fireman's Fund, but many companies. So for the right insurance at the right price, sign up with your independent agent. He serves you first. In the yellow pages, Fireman's Fund Insurance Companies. One of these batteries started a whole revolution in automobile batteries. The J.C. Penney battery. There are no filler caps. You never have to add water. It's the most powerful battery ever built for a passenger car. That's why it's fully warranted for as long as you own your car. If it fails, return it. We'll replace it free. Only at J.C. Penney Auto Centers or Catalog Desks. It's the last battery your car will ever need. The 43rd Annual Sugar Bowl Game, Pittsburgh and Georgia. This ABC sports exclusive being brought to you by Cotton Incorporated, the fiber company of America's cotton producers. The more cotton, the better you feel. By Chevrolet and Chevrolet dealers who invite you to see and drive Chevrolet's totally new six-passenger car, the new Chevrolet. And by Light Beer, everything you always wanted in a beer and less. And we have no score with 10.57 to go inside the Superdome in New Orleans. Second possession of the ball game for the Pitt Panthers. The football just short of the 20-yard line. The ball is handed over the left side of the line, and it's a good offensive surge for Tony Dorsett. As the 192-pound senior from Aliquippa is brought down by Jimmy Griffith, 47, and Ben Zambezi, 44, linebackers for Georgia. This is only the second time, Keith, that Pittsburgh has looked at what we call an even defense or a wide six. There is no man over the center's nose. Once in a while, when the split end is off, they'll move a man over. But this is a little bit different look than they are normal that they not than they normally see during the course of the year. Here comes an unbalanced line. Give Dorset five. Second down and five out of the eye. The pitch goes to Tony. He gets one block. He gets two blocks. He's cut down hard by 44. Ben Zambezi, a junior from Macon. Watch Mr. Zambezi doing his thing. Very quick. Zambezi is the, the leading tackler on this football team, and he can really move. Number 44, as you see, roaming to the ball. This was a pitch out to Dorset. Here he comes flowing all the way from the weak side linebacker spot and makes the play short of a first down. Football is sitting right at the 27-yard line. It is third down, and they need two and a half yards. Georgia jumping around on the defense. Give it to Dorset. He's hit head on right at the 30-yard line. Really popped it again. Georgia is calling for the ball. That be a fumble. That's the second time Georgia has been suggestive, and the officials confirm it. Ronnie Swope, number 78. I'm not sure they have confirmed it yet, Eric. No, I haven't seen an official give me the... Well, it looks like they're going to do it to Pittsburgh. Yep. <laughs> I'll tell you this, Georgia sure is doing a lot of lobbying down around the ball. I guarantee you there were 11 of them pointing. <laughs> Here's uh, Jimmy Griffith, the uh, number two tackle on the football team. He steps in, falls in with Zambini, Zambezi, I should say, and they stop Dorset. We can't see whether the ball comes out here, whether it's late, but at least the officials gave the ball back to Pittsburgh, and it's a... First down. First down. 
right on the 30-yard line for the Panthers. But double wide receivers to the left side now as Kavanaugh goes down the line, penalty flags, the pitch is outside the Dorset. He's pinned in. He's caught behind the line of scrimmage, but being the talent that he is, slips out of there and gets at least across the 30 for a yard. Bill Krug, number 42, was the man making life miserable for Tony. But it's offside against Georgia, five-yard penalty coming up against the Dogs. That'll be the second five-yarder they have been tacked with so far in the game. Well, the junkyard dogs are really quick. They're not that big. Ronnie Slopes being the biggest then because it's Ronnie in the runs. But I'll guarantee you this, that it may be that Pittsburgh has not looked at a team quite as quick as this Georgia Bulldog defense is. They've looked very good thus far in the two series. Vince Buckley indicating offside against Georgia. A little bit too eager. Just a fraction of a second. It is second down. It'll be first down and five from the 35 after the five-yard penalty. They send Taylor way wide to the left side this time. And Kavanaugh hands it to the up man, the fullback, Elliot Walker, 200-pounder out of Miami, and he's across the 40 for another Pittsburgh first down, and here is Jim Lampley. Thank you, Keith. One element of this game that's been a subject of discussion here in New Orleans all week is the difference in the way the two teams prepared for the game. Pittsburgh's players all week, a 2 a.m. curfew until a couple of nights ago and it got a little earlier, they were prowling Bourbon Street and could be seen out carousing throughout the week. Georgia's players in by 11 every night, tucked into bed and sleeping. Some people think it could be a factor, but John Major says his team is the most mature team in college football and it'll have no effect whatsoever. All right, Jimmy, double wide left again as Matt Cavanaugh sets the Panthers in white. Georgia jumps up into a six-man front pitch to Dorset, missed by one. Number 47, Griffith misses him. Dorset, they finally run him down behind the line of scrimmage, and there were five Georgia Bulldogs that had a shot at him, and finally Swopes got him. He's really keying on Dorset. One of the things that uh, is interesting here, uh, Pittsburgh is going into a high balance line, trying to surprise Georgia by putting more people on one side of the line than the other and then giving Dorset some additional blockers. But the Georgia Bulldogs are adjusting to it without any problem, this, at least this early in the ballgame. Of course, one of the things about Dorset, he's like Ricky Bell in this respect. He just gets stronger and stronger as the game goes on. Boss on the play. Back to the 36-yard line. Kavanaugh back to throw. He's looking for Taylor. He's over the middle. He's short for the pass, and it's almost intercepted by Ben Zambese, just off of his fingers. There's Zambese again. He reads the pass. He comes back to the strong side hook. Beautiful position here. He jumps up and just deflects the ball. The ball was on target by Kavanaugh, just over his head, deflects it, and almost intercepts it. All right. It is third down now. Pittsburgh's got to go to the Georgia 49 to get a first down. The ball is at the 36, and he's 15 yards on third down. That coming out of four. He gets his pass off to the sideline. The pass is complete. It is caught by Gordon Jones, who is a very dangerous man, number 24. And he's right about first down territory. Here's Jones uh, driving right straight up the field. Kavanaugh rolled away from him to pull the secondary. Jones puts a good move on comes down and turns on a curl hook, and this is a throwback pattern. Kavanaugh rolled his right and then threw back, and it is almost knocked down. Jones puts a good move on, and I guess the first down, or they're going to measure for it here? It's pretty, it's pretty gonna close. Going to have to measure. It is right about the Georgia 49-yard line. It's that right. much. Would you gamble? It's fourth down. Well, I don't think I would in a game like this. I don't know. Let's see what Johnny does. Kind of an interesting thing going into the ball game here for Georgia is number 77. He's an offensive lineman, but he's going in uh, anticipating that Pittsburgh may gamble. We're going for it. He's picked uh, Mark Wilson, the All-American tackle. And they're going to go. Well, Georgia puts Wilson in defensively to get a little more heft up front. There's Johnny. I think he's got it. He took it over the right side, going in behind Tom Brazoza and George Messick. Belusi, Brazoza, Willemowski, and a couple of other of the Pittsburgh oh. players have had the flu. And uh, not quite up to their optimum level. But it is good for a first down as Kavanaugh took it right in behind the right side lineman. Pittsburgh now with three first downs of the game. And so far, Georgia has only had the ball one time. Still has not gained the first down. 
from the 49-yard line. Jeff the line of scrimmage by Jeff Lewis. And that's the third hit in the game for Jeff Lewis. He's a number three tackler on this football team. Had 87 total hits during the course of the year. And interestingly enough, he's a top scholar, a 3.89 average. So besides being a heck of a football player, he's a super student. Got a heck of a kid. Not that big either. The old Mississippi curling through the grand old lady of a city in New Orleans, Louisiana. It's cold outside, about 32 degrees. We're inside of the dome on second down and eight. The pass over the middle. Beautiful pass to Elliott Walker coming out of the backfield. First down and goal to go for the Pitt Panthers at the 10-yard line. Johnny Henderson brought him down. 36 yards on the pass play. Great call, Keith. They were in a double zone. Only two safety men back. And Pittsburgh sent the two wide receivers right straight down the field, and the tight end just drove right into the middle between the two, and the two defenders could not cover the three receivers. Here it is, right in the heart of it. Here comes the two defenders back to the inside. Ball is nose of the football is sitting right at the 10-yard line. Bob Hutton comes in that fullback now, replacing Elliott Walker. Going to give Elliott a breather. Gordon Jones goes wide to the left side, Taylor to the right side, Dorset split with Hutton in the backfield. The pitch is back to Tony. Tony's at the five, nope, the six-yard line, where he is cut down by Ben Zambezi. Timing was just right for Matt Cavanaugh. He did not pitch that ball until he was absolutely forced to do so, and uh, Dorset got a good lead block. Take a look at Zambezi, who is some kind of football player. He's all over the field. Here he is going number 44 here, coming from the right side linebacker all the way across the field on a pitch out and making the play on Dorset right there and for a five-yard game. Outside the five-yard line, second down and goal to goal for the Panthers. Kavanaugh keeping on the option. Turns, touchdown! Beautifully executed. You can see it from upstairs there. You can see Kavanaugh had the daylight. He took it, and there wasn't anyone close. Well executed, well blocked play. Carson Long, number five, who has set a ton of NCAA kicking records in his career at Pittsburgh out of the hold of Larry Slider for the extra point. It is good. Here's Kavanaugh's run for the first touchdown of the ball game. He comes down the line on just a true option with a lead blocker rather than a fake. Well blocked. He cuts it to the inside right here. And there's no one at home. Takes it into the end zone for the first touchdown of the game. It's 7-0 Hurry, Chevette two hundred dollar cash bonus from Chevrolet ends on January tenth. Mr. Bootkiss and I have a problem. I do not appreciate American football. And I don't appreciate rugby. However, there is one thing we both appreciate. Light beer from Miller. Light contains a third less calories than their regular beer. It's also less filling. But our favorite thing is the way it tastes. Quite right, Dicky boy. I'll never like your football, but I do love your light beer. Mike, I'll never like rugby, but I do love those cute little shorts. <laughs> light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer and less. Will Muhammad Ali ever fight again? Join Howard Cosell tomorrow for an exclusive live interview with the heavyweight champion on his boxing future, plus the spectacular Vienna Ice Review and race number one in the World Series of Auto Racing tomorrow on the Sunday edition of ABC's Wide World of Sports. For the Pittsburgh folks' attention, Georgia Bulldogs are going to get their hands on the ball now for the second time in this first quarter with 5.44 to go and Pitt going 80 yards. For the first touchdown, Pittsburgh kicks off to Gene Washington, number 82. He's a wide receiver. He's the deep man. Carson Long will hit it for the Panthers. High, high kick. It's going to be short. It's up high, though. William McClendon. 
Oh, he broke through that first punch and brought it out to about the 23-yard line. Brought it by 13 yards. Pittsburgh scoring play, 80 yards, 13 plays. They used 5-13. Georgia has been a long drive football team much of the year. That gone outside, uh, they've gone from 60 yards or more 28 times for scores this year. Now they've been a plugging type team, grinding out that three and four and five yards and then coming up with a split end reverse or something like that to get the big play. Washington wide left, Goff the quarterback. Goff coming down the line. Here's the ball. Oh, bad pitch out. And the ball is covered by Goff. He delayed too long in giving the ball to Kevin McLean, and McLean had no place to go with it. Good defense by Pittsburgh. They had everybody on site. They had the uh, five-man covered on the counter option. They had the quarterback covered, and they had the pitch man covered. They did a good job of defensing. Losses back to the 20-yard line for three yards. Second down, 13, Georgia. Hit leading 7-0. scrimmage by Arnie Weatherington, number 59, a shooting linebacker. And he's the number two tackle on this Pittsburgh team with 111 total hits. Now here's Jim. Before the season, Coach Vince Dooley of Georgia promised the media and fans in Georgia that should the Bulldogs win the Southeastern Conference Championship, he'd shave his head. Well, two weeks ago at a huge pep rally before this game in Georgia, Vince Dooley shaved his head. And he's come here down in New Orleans and been at practice with it every day. And now five of the Georgia assistant coaches have the shaved heads to go with their players' shaved heads. Keith and Pittsburgh not to scalp them again unless they get something going. Here's the bomb as Goff delivers it intended for Washington. It's way over his head, out of sight. It'll be fourth down. We should have waited there a little bit. He had, <clears throat> excuse me, he had the receiver breaking open, but he overthrew him. Might have been a little lack of coordination on the route. Bucky Diltz, who hit his first punt for 47 yards, is standing back at the five-yard line. Deep is Willie Taylor for Pittsburgh. Left footer gets it off. Oh, another beauty. He really hangs the ball and forces Taylor to go fair catch inside the 35-yard line. He hung it up there a little bit more than five seconds, and he hits another 47-yarder. We have four minutes and two seconds to play in the first quarter at the Superdome of the Sugar Bowl, and Pitt leads it 7-0. Every time we run a test, there's bound to be a little bit of tension. Well, have I done this? Did I remember to do that? Ken Haven, safety engineer. This is who we are and what we do at General Motors. The small cars are subjected to the same barrier tests as the larger cars. And using that technique, we've been able to test the safety of small cars structurally with regard to the occupants. Now, we think we have the finest facility in the world. We don't think anybody can conduct the kind of tests we're conducting with the amount of data that we can gather. GM has a, a real serious interest in safety, and knowing that's part of your job, uh, it makes me feel good. At high speed, we sacrifice portions of the car in order to save the occupants. The crushing of the front is allowing us to dissipate the energy of the cramps. The passenger compartment remains essentially intact. General Motors, people building transportation to serve people. Here is Vince Dooley with the shaved head we were talking about earlier. Of course, the original idea came from the Georgia defensive coordinator, Irk Russell, whose head has been shaven for years and whose players did it to emulate him. Dooley has a toupee, which he's been wearing to public functions. Last night, he appeared for the first time without it and promised to go on natural today for our cameras. <laughs> All right. That's a 33-yard line now. First down for the Panthers. They lead 7-0. And that's Kavanaugh. And the ball to Russell. Look out. That's why he won the Heisman Trophy. First down at the Pittsburgh 49-yard line. It's amazing the number of tackles that he breaks. Actually, it was fairly well blocked, but Dorsett broke through two tackles, picked up super yardage. As you watch here on the replay, just on the tailback off tackle play, there's one block tackler. There he shakes off another and picks up good yardage on the play. Three Bulldogs had their hands on him before they finally got him down. First down, Panthers 49-yard line. Kavanaugh gives to the up man Walker. Elliot Walker, who had the big play, 
The pass reception on the touchdown drive goes down to the Georgia 48, the three yards, second and seven coming. Ronnie slopes the tackle. There's the statistical career on Tony Dorsett at Pittsburgh. 6,082 yards in four years. Four that is. You remember four years. And the most important number, of course, is that 5.7 average per carry. We're all glad to see him go at Notre Dame, I'll tell you that. <laughs> second down, seven. Georgia 48, Cavanaugh, Dorsett. This by one. He has that faculty for cutting it in. Now, there were three red shirts over there ready to bury him, but he cut it back just enough to avoid the solid hit. There was nothing there. He avoided the solid hit and also avoided losing yardage. And that is really the mark of a super back. Nine carries, 28 yards. Ray Goff, the Georgia quarterback, who's yet to get his team on track. Georgia's only gained four yards so far in the game. At the Bulldog 47-yard line, it is third down. They need six. Kavanaugh whips it. Taylor overthrows him. Matt Kavanaugh missed his man, the wide receiver, slanting in. And this program is special exclusive of ABC Sports. Let's pause five seconds to allow our local stations to identify themselves. The bald head has become the in thing, <laughs> at least in Athens, Georgia. A lot of Kojaks. Sliders caught a rifle shot into the end zone. It'll be Georgia first down at the 20-yard line. That's a 47-yarder by Slider. And he knocks it right on off the field of play. Here's Jim again. This is Jackie Sherrill, the man who's been the head coach at Washington State. Next year will inherit the number one team at Pittsburgh. Jackie, some people think that you might not want Pittsburgh to win the game, leave you that pressure of coming back for national champions, but I know you want it. Yeah, very badly. It's, uh, for the young men, they've worked awful hard for four years, and it means an awful lot to them. We'll have some athletes coming back from that group. Yes. We have a very good nucleus, and we have to have a good recruiting year, but uh, we have some good kids coming back. Good luck. Thank you very much, Jim. Okay, Keith Jackson. Georgia first down. And Kevin McLee and Al Pollard in the setback's position. They go to the fullback for the first time, Pollard, and he sticks his head in there for about a yard and a half. He's a 200-pounder from Macon, not too fast, but very steady, hard-hitting football player. A couple of these Pittsburghers are going to be going with us to Hawaii for the Hula Bowl. Al Romano, the middle guard, and Tony Dorsett will be in the Hula Bowl, and you'll see it next Saturday live at 4 Eastern time over most of these ABC stations. Second down, call it eight yards to go for the Bulldogs. Ray Goff has a lot of room to run. Out to the 33, the first first down of the ball game for the Bulldogs. Uh, Jim Kramer brought him down to Pittsburgh. Ray Goff put a good move on to get the first down. Interestingly, interestingly enough, uh, George has gone to the air. Goff has gone back to pass on a number of occasions early in the ball game. I wonder if they feel that uh, they're going to have to throw the ball more to loosen up this Pittsburgh defense. The old city relatively quiet here today as New Orleans comes down to a standstill for this big matchup to end the 1976 college football season. Dome is full of 75,000 people. Ray Goff looks over, doesn't like what he sees, calls time with one minute and 33 seconds to go in the first quarter. Here's Jim. A little while ago, we saw Arnie Wetherington make a great play for Pittsburgh. He's one of the most interesting stories in this game. A guy who, a year ago, was involved in a difficult legal scrape involving some stolen television sets. Arnie pled guilty, went to coach John Majors after having not been with Pittsburgh team in spring practice, and asked to be put back on the team. Majors gave him the chance, and all of the people who surround him now say that Arnie's a great testament to the good forces that can come about as a result of participation in this sport. He works with a youth counseling program in Pittsburgh, says that he made a mistake, has learned his lesson, and wants to pay it all back now. Arnie Wetherington from Miami Jackson High School. We've had a change too, Jim, in that our list of officials has been corrected. Ed Ward is the back judge working the ball game. Of course, they're playing on artificial turf here in the Dome. So we're assured of a comfortable setting with the temperature last night dropping down to the 20s here in New Orleans after having a couple of very warm days. So we can be very happy that we are inside for the ball game today because the temperature probably will not get out of the 30s. You know, uh, Keith Rakoff, a sign of a well-coached football team, Rakoff had a play on. Pittsburgh overloaded the defense to the double flankers, and he elected to take a timeout in his first quarter yet, uh, not to waste it down. And uh, I think it's good thinking on his part, particularly early in the ball game. 
All right, this is Gene Washington to the left. First down, mark it on the 34-yard line of Georgia. Turn, wants to throw it. Doesn't have a chance. James Kramer, number 58, a 218-pound senior from Jeffersonboro, Pennsylvania, gets his man. He wanted to throw the ball again. He had a counteraction and came down the line looking for the receivers before they were open. You there was the, Jimbo. Right. You see 14 Jeff Delaney coming in here on a safety blitz. Washington was on a fly pattern, but he was looking short. Second down, 12, from the 32. Goff straight at it. McLeod trailing. Goff got to keep it. That's the play they fumbled while ago. He unloaded it again to McLeod, but he really doesn't give Kevin much of a chance to do anything with it. Well, he, uh, the defense is, uh, the Pittsburgh defense is recovering so well. They're overloading this side. It's very tough to uh, run an option play against the defense that Pittsburgh is showing them. You got a flag on the field, and you got a big pile going into the sidelines. I don't know where or why or what it might be. It could be a, a late hit over on the sidelines. It could be a little bit of a scuffle erupted on the sidelines, too. Yeah, I can't tell. Uh, Personal foul. It's against Pittsburgh. It's against Georgia. Oh. That'll wipe it off. We'll do yeah. it again. Offsetting penalties. Well, there's Ferbers and some fever. Couldn't see it uh, here. I don't know whether it happened on the sideline. Here's the, is this Delta 37 coming over? Let's see. Oh, yeah, he's clear. Yeah, he's clear out of bounds here. He should have pulled up. They were way out of bounds there. That's the. Apparently some Georgia little... partisan retaliated on <laughs> Somewhere, yeah. <laughs> An offsetting penalty it is third down. The football is marked just short of the 34. And McLeod goes to the 39-yard line. That is short of a first down. McLeod finally getting a little bit of room up the middle to run with it. And uh, we're talking.